Hey, if at first we don't succeed, we use a bigger hammer. All right, so we are putting our potato planters in the shop. And obviously, yes, Trevor said I barely missed the door by like two inches. We are creeping in here. Um, we're gonna pull them in to get them all serviced up, ready to go. They do take up the entire shop. We'll back one in and then back the other one in. Oh, need to go that way. It is a tight squeeze, any way you look at it. All right, now to go get number two planter and call me lazy or a farmer, but I'm gonna take a shortcut up here between the two cellars. You can see last night we got about, well, this morning we got about three or four inches of snow. It's sloughing down off of the cellars, just building up. But we're gonna go back here and pick up the other planter so we can put it into the shop. Just gotta get ready for planting something. This winter's been a pretty uh, dry, warm winter until this morning. Um, but it is supposed to be like 45 degrees tomorrow, so all this will melt and flood and make a lot of muddy mess all over everywhere. So we'll try and get things situated and moved around today. There's the other planter we gotta go get. We'll get things put away in the shop let everything melt out dry off why it's not super muddy we're not dragging mud in the shop today okay i just got backed up to the other planter back here um as you can see i just leave those uh those arms right there raised up because there's enough weight i just back up to it it doesn't lock in but i'll back up pick it up like this so the front end where the, the jacks are, the jack stands are, are up off the ground. The back end has crazy wheels that aren't extended, but when I pick it up like this, um, it'll just run on the wheels like I did the last one. So now we will uh, start to move and it's not gonna fall off, it's just gonna follow us where we go. So, a little bit of, uh, like I said, gotta do work smarter not harder right that's why I didn't have to get out of the tractor either time moving these big planters around I'll just back it in the shop unhook it pull the tractor out and away we go now we just gotta run the gauntlet through all the equipment there's the new uh, Lemkin grain drill um, it has not actually been hooked to a tractor yet I'm gonna get the uh, 8370RT hooked up, get that hooked up so we can get ready to plant grain, oh, maybe in a month and a half, month, month and a half or so. So we'll have some exciting new videos to come. There's our uh, two of our hay choppers. Um, they're supposed to be coming out, putting some new inoculant tanks on with some new monitors. Uh, there's our even flow bin that is for sale. We did get a new belt and shaft for the bottom of it uh, So it'll be good to go for whoever buys it Anyway, there's uh, some of our other equipment an old dump wagon. We could sell that some old fuel tanks that have been cleaned out We don't use anymore. There's the dammer diker and Some grain augers. We'll get ready to use those grain augers when I plant grain into the uh, grain combine I mean the grain harvester not the combine I use the grain cart load the grain cart and the grain cart helps load the grain drill so here we'll make our way around the cellars uh, there's our conveyors also these conveyors there's one two three four five six 40 foot conveyors they are 30 inches wide um, those are also for sale we're going to be selling all of those. Those are for sale, they could be for sale right now. We won't need them. Uh, hopefully come harvest time, we'll have our new conveyors here. Um, as we come around everything, uh, we will drive past. There's our pipe trailers. Uh, some of our spud beds over there. Um, the 
gooseneck trailer and that sorter table that, it, that has the enclosed canopy on it it will also be for sale uh, we ordered a bigger sorter table to be able to unload our even flow bin at full speed so I think we're keeping this piler to transload onto some semis at harvest but uh, anyway now you can see where they did just move snow it is nice and muddy they're supposed to be coming over here uh, tomorrow and loading up some uh, potatoes to haul to the plant to make into potato flakes so we can all eat them uh, they're gonna be bringing in equipment sometime today they told me and uh, we're going into that a-frame cellar over there so we got the snow and stuff all cleaned out it is kind of muddy we're thinking about maybe going to get in a couple loads of uh, just pit run gravel uh, so that we can the semis won't have a hard time backing into that cellar so now we will back this planter in and uh, back it up next to the other one okay now as you walk in the shop it is very full uh, we have our Lockwood uh, six row air cut planter here uh, we might be trading this one in on a new one and then right behind it the first one we pulled in the other Lockwood 606 air cut planter uh, we'll uh, let these things dry off so we're not uh, getting dripped on when we're crawling underneath them and we will get them all serviced up uh, fix anything that's wrong as far as discs underneath uh, cups hoses um, fans we'll look at the fans make sure they're all good to go no holes in them and then we will uh, pull them back out in here in this there's a fan in this big thing here and we got to pull the boot off there we took the shield off right here for these pulleys in the belt now we just got to unbolt it and we'll get the cherry picker hook it up there you got to take the back side of this plate off you see all these little screw all these bolts there they're nuts pull it off we can get the fan out put a new fan in there that's what we're gonna uh, attempt right now Got the fan off. We're gonna sit it here on the shop bench and get it taken off and go from there. So I gotta stop this video here for a second. We got a Zoom meeting with the IPGA, Idaho Potato Grower Association here at 10. So we'll stop the video here for a minute and we will get back to fixing this thing. Uh, if you look in here, there's the fan. Uh, we got to take it all out and replace some bearings, but we'll, we'll fix that here in a minute. So we just unbolted this, took all these little bolts off. There's one left and this will come off and then we can pull the fan out. And there she be. It's a snug, it's a snug fit. It's like almost no clearance to get this thing out, exactly. but we just have to take this hub off and, and then it, and then it uh, comes off. That kid's name came in with that. Taking the hub off of this side. 
to because there's bearings in here. So we're just going to replace the bearings and so we're taking the hub off that side so we don't have to worry about taking it on this side. We'll just pull this whole thing out and we'll replace all of it. So just got to try and get the hub off this other side. It can be kind of difficult when it's all rusty and corroded. Well, it worked. This is loose. Push that off. We'll pull this off and this off. And then there's some really big nuts right there that we have to loosen and then slide everything out the other side. This big rusty nut to take off. Trevor said this is coming apart too easy. You're making me nervous. What's going to apart? Here's the thing, Trevor. We've taken this apart so many times in the last few years that it's used to coming apart. We've worn it so it's not nice and tight anymore. So You've ruined its spirit. There's a, a key right here we have to take out. It's apart and it actually did move. The shaft started moving, but the fan. The fan is hitting right here. So we have to cut this side off in order to get this fan to move. Shaft still looks pretty good, yep. so we just need to get this hub off. This hub was welded to the shaft, so we're gonna try and get this hub the rest of the way off. We might be able to reuse this piece, not have to buy a new one. Yeah, the hub off, it's on there. Now we have to undo these bolts because we have to take these bearings out. They still feel okay, but the last time we changed the fan and not the bearings. The next day the bearings went out and we had to do this whole thing all over again. So we're just going to do it all at the same time and hopefully not have that problem. Here's the fan that we just took out. So where it wears out is on these little fins here. Where's just, as it spins, you can kind of see all the lines from dirt and stuff getting slung through it. But it wears really thin. There's a couple of them, like that one right there. It wore completely through that. So when that happens, you uh, you lose all your pressure because these these planters run off of air pressure. So the air that fan produces suction, which then sucks the sea potato onto this little cup here, and then there's another fan on the other side that this blows it off. So down there in the bottom, it goes in and it blows air out to drop the seed piece off. But if your fans wore out, you don't get enough suction to hold the seed piece to the to the cup. And then it doesn't work. And you drop seed off. So gotta replace the fan. Hopefully, we weren't planning on running these planters this year, but we weren't able to get two new ones. We are getting one new one. So we gotta run this one. This one over here, we're not gonna run. We're probably gonna trade it in. This is our oldest one. But yeah, we're we gotta get some parts now. Old fan housing. We found a new one. So we're gonna put it on our cart and wheel it into the shop. So we'll wheel this in. Start putting it back together. We got the new fan housing here. And then we have new hubs new bearings. We gotta put the bearings in here and then bolt it up and start assembling this. Well, we got all the bearings put in and now we gotta bolt it, an arm bolted back up and Terrence tighten up the, the nut. Josh is trying to hold it on the other side. We may have to get the oh, fan put in before we can tighten it up. All right. Up. Well, we got the fan back in. We had to make sure to get this hub 
just the right distance away so that fan doesn't come around and rub on this piece here because it has these little rivets so it can't stick out and then you also can't have it rubbing on the other side over here so it has to be just centered so we made sure to mark the last one we'll uh we'll start putting this back together we have to put the the big cover back on here and then throw it up on the planter so one thing we're gonna have to do is we had to take this arm off here so these bolts will have to loosen a little bit and shift this arm to get it to to bolt up on the planter oh we're hitting okay we just got the the cover put back on and now when you spin this fan inside it doesn't hit because it has rivets on this side that would normally rub on this side you have a little bit of clearance and then on the other side there's carriage bolts so you have like an eighth of an inch space and you have to line that fan up just right or rubs so if you have one of these and you're changing the fan you make sure to measure where this hub is on this shaft on both sides on this side and on that side or else your fan's gonna rub and it's gonna mangle it. Well, we got it We got it back together, but we're worried about this hub slipping off. We had it welded before. Yeah, it was welded to the shaft. But we're worried about the hub slipping off, so just welding it up. There, now that hub shouldn't go anywhere stacked on top and bottom because that fan we can't have that fan move either way because it'll hit so i think it's about ready to put back on we are maneuvering this it's hooked to the cherry picker engine hoist whatever you want to call it and we're maneuvering it into place it goes right here on the end of the frame hooks into this big pipe so we gotta maneuver it over there. As you can see, we kind of need a bigger shop because there's only a couple feet of space once we get these planters in here to even maneuver this around. So it's gonna be kind of a pain in the butt. big rubber bushing here and then it's kind of hard to get it to line up get it to go on just right so you have to finagle it move it around and try and get that slip on there so that tends to be the problem area when putting this back together Got it on so we had to loosen these so we could get it to line up down there on the bottom and then have to tighten this up tighten all these up and then we have a, fan, a belt that's back there and a cover and everything that we have to put on so this is the cover we've we've cut notches and stuff in it so we can kind of just slip it on a little bit easier we made this hole bigger cut, cut a couple things off down there so it'll kind of slip on easier because originally it was a pain in the butt to get off you had to take these pulleys off and stuff just to get the fan but the cover off but it should just slip right on fairly easy and then it bolts to this brace right here Okay, we're 
or he's like, someone go hold the drive shaft that sticks out the front. This is very reminiscent of, of when we took it off. Appendage. Just putting the belt on. It can be kind of a pain. This belt is just a hair too small. But it doesn't have to have a tightener. Yeah, but th but this belt, we don't have to put the big stupid tightener in here, so we use a belt that's just a little too small. Works good. Got it. Look lined up. On there. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty straight. <laughs> now what we are doing, now that we got the fan and everything all back together, is all these, these are called shoes. So right behind this is where the spuds drop in the ground. So this goes in the ground and opens the dirt up. So the spud has a spot to go in and then there's closing discs back there. You can see that close the dirt back over it. Well, on the point, there's this little plate right there. So it look, it's these and it bolts on and that's a wear piece. So you can see the R's are kind of rounded and then they're flat. It's because they've been worn flat. So we have new ones that aren't flat. So we're replacing all of those shoes on the front. There's only two bolts that hold them on, but there's a little tiny channel back in there that you gotta squeeze into to, to get to them. So it's kind of a pain, but that's what we're working on now. Here we have, those are the closing discs. So Josh is down here. He's spinning them to make sure they spin because they basically just need to spin if they're stiff and don't want to spin very well, then they're gonna seize up and they'll end up, it'll end up just breaking it off. We we find these discs that have just busted off in the field. We find them in the field because they just snap off when you're going. So you gotta try and make, at least make sure they're all spinning. There are bearings that we can replace inside of there if they're not spinning. So that's what, what we're doing um, that's becoming common on this after we've used it for a long time is these pipes will get little holes in them so we have to go through on each one of these little tubes and check and see if there's holes so how we check is i got a flashlight in my hand i shine it in the pipe and you can see it's lighting up you can see light through the pipe then that has a hole obviously that's a hole but sometimes the holes are just Little tiny pinholes, or you're not quite sure. Well, there's a pinhole right there. Right there. So that's how we check these if they have holes. So you can replace these pipes. You have to take all this off, and it is a pain in the butt. So our quick fix that we've been doing for the last couple of years is we just take some quick steel. We put quick steel over the hole and then duct tape it on because this is sucking air in. So it's not gonna suck the quick steel in, so it basically just seals up the hole. And then we don't have any issues with having suction loss. There's some over here on this one that have been repaired last year. It's like, here's some quick steel with duct tape and that lasted all year. But you can see we have a bunch of new holes this year. There's one there, one there, one there. So we have to go through, we have to check all of them for, for holes. It's usually the ones right here behind the tractor. Like those two end ones, none of those have holes in them. But these two in the middle have a ton of holes. Here's one of the old shoes we took off. That's how much is worn off. That's like two inches right here. So if your seed depth is six inches and you're knocking off two inches, then your seed is not going as deep as you want it to go. So yeah, it's good that we're changing those. working on, doesn't want to come off. He's got the torch down here, torching the bolt off, because the nut does not want to come off at all. You burn yourself, Trevor? He burns. <laughs> he likes it. A few of these. So I put some quick steel underneath that, and then put the duct tape on top of it just to hold it in place. Basically, he's just sealing up the hole. So should keep it so we don't lose suction. And we'll go like that until these just completely start breaking off. So we were in working on all the planters and stuff and they were taking spuds out of the cellar right, by, right behind our shop. So we were like, oh, let's go look at the spuds, see how they look. Now this cellar 
had a few sprouts on the front, so we weren't sure how they were going to be. So let me just go show you what the pile looks like so far. This isn't great. So this is the pile. They've taken a couple of loads out. Now normally the wall, when they scoop into it, would be sloped because the spuds roll. This wall is straight up and down because of all the sprouts. Those sprouts are so bad. I haven't seen a, a cellar sprout this bad in a while. We kind of think that because this cellar had a problem, the, the breaker kept tripping up here outside and it kept shutting off and it'd be, it would just be off for a few days. So we're thinking that they just got a little bit too warm. They're not wet, they're not rotten. And if you break the sprouts off, the potatoes still look perfectly fine. Like they're not soft, they're not green. There's nothing wrong with them. They just have a little sprout on them. So we're thinking that it just got a little bit too warm because the cellar kept shutting off. But these sprouts are huge. Let me try and crawl up here. Up here, you can see further back, and there's some sprouts that are like two, that one right there, and the tallest one right there, that's a two foot tall sprout. But it sprouted all the way through the whole pile. Now you can kind of see how straight up and down that wall is. That's, they're stacked about 12 feet, maybe 15 feet high. And it's just a straight wall. We're kind of worried about the guy who runs the scooper. If this just, if he gets up here close, it just falls on him. So, not ideal. That's not what you want your potatoes to look like. Granted, they don't really ding you that much for sprouts because they don't weigh anything. So, they're still going to be good potatoes. But we do need to get them out of here before it gets worse. Just put this on. It's a new air pipe this is the suction pipe so it goes down in here and hooks to this drum with all these cups on it and this this is what uh sucks the air through and keeps the seed on the cups so this one was cracked off at the bottom so we just had to replace it okay so this planter is done we have fixed all the different things that have needed to be fixed on it um we just still have one little hose right there that needs to be swapped out this one's done. We weren't going to run this one, but since we're buying a new one, they're not going to give us hardly anything on trade. We're going to just run it. But that means we need to fix a couple things. So we're just taking out like this belt was bad. It's sitting right here. You can see it's a, it's a little worn out. And they're working on changing this hydraulic pump. This one wasn't very accurate planning last year, so it has this hydraulic pump right here that turns everything, and it was surging, so we need a new pump. We also have one of the bins, so down here in the bottom, there's a big plastic bin, so we need to replace one of those. There's just a few things we need to replace on this and get it kind of up and running, and then we'll have this one ready to go too, so we'll have three planters. We may run all three, or we may just have this one as a spare, just in case one of the other ones breaks down. We may sell this one. So, we might, we might sell this one too. So, if you're interested, If you want to buy a, an air cut planter that is all fixed and ready to go, we may be selling it. So, let us know. But, I'm not going to make you guys watch us fix this one. We'll just uh, get it done right here. Oh, well, snap kind of worked. The motor's fixed. And a couple things are fixed, but not everything's fixed. Those are bad. We're, we're in the middle of fixing those. So updating here. We also found that the bearings in this fan, the bearings in this piece right there are bad. So that's just wiggling around. So if we let that run for a day, it'd probably take those bearings out and this whole fan would start shaking around. So we have to take this whole side off. It's the opposite fan, so it's not the one with the big spout. This is the, this is the blower fan that blows the seed off, but that's bad. We also, uh, this happened, the, uh, the tire's now off. This plate, the plate right here. This 
something missing right there. It's supposed to have a shaft like that down there. Yeah, it's broke off and this plate is bent. That shaft is sitting right here. So, and that's, that's the piece right there is what that shaft is. Helps hold the wheel on. So we've got a few things to fix on this. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll update you guys when we're a little further along. Move. Little update, it won't come apart because it's never been apart since 2004. And uh, yeah, we've cracked this, this pulley in a couple spots. We've cracked the hub, so we're gonna need parts. We're probably gonna have to cut it off the shaft. Okay, if at first we don't succeed, we use a bigger hammer. Hey, it worked. Look at that. Why didn't we start with that? I don't know. Probably because you're not supposed to. A little update. We were able to get this little fan out without taking the shaft off. So, took the fan out. We just took this arm off over here and we, Trevor drove the, uh, the bearings out of it. So we gotta get new bearings for that. And then we'll put it all back together and put it back on. So if you wanna know how that whole process works, well, you already saw that in the beginning of the video. So now we are, we got this all put back together. But instead of using the cherry picker, we're just, uh, they're just gonna lift it over and set it on this ledge over here. You guys are working real hard. Yeah. You're, you're doing a good job. Yeah, I bet we are. Once again, you're going to Somebody's got to film it. <laughs> We're cutting this shield because that little hole will not go over this pulley. So instead of taking the pulley off, which would be really hard, we're just going to cut the shield hole so it'll just slide right over it. So if you're an engineer, watch and learn, please. Yeah, don't engineer things that make it really hard to put together. Just make everything easy. Okay, we finally got this put back together. We were getting this put back on. This is the tightener for the belt. And no, Trevor noticed that the, all the bearing is gone inside there. So we had to pull this back off and replace that. Because it seems like you can never fix anything without finding 15 other things that need to be fixed. So we're getting there. Those two that are on there aren't the new ones. We finally have all the parts to put all this together. We're waiting for U-bolts, but we finally have all the parts to put all this back together. So that's what we're currently doing. We got to hoist this back up here and just put everything back together. It all just goes together fairly easy, but it's going to be a challenge getting the U-bolts in. this we got it up there and everything and now we're just fighting with the u-bolts has four big u-bolts that go across this brace and go in here we got one in over there we're just fighting with these trying to get them to line up because they didn't quite get bent all the way so they're sprung just a little bit wider than the hole but yeah it's just what we're fighting with at the moment so we got all the bolts and stuff in they're not quite tight there's too much bolt sticking out. So we're cutting the bolt heads off and then we'll finish tightening them down and then we'll unhook everything and this tire will be done. At the same time, Josh has been putting, he's been putting these, these shanks on right here with a shovel that just helps open up the rows. So that's what Josh has been doing. As you can see, I'm welding. So let me show you what I'm working on now. So these are the shoes on the planter. And they look like this. They're not supposed to be flat like that. It's all worn off. So we took this two round bar, one inch round bar, weld them together. <clears throat> I'm welding them on the bottom of the points here to 
bring that depth back down so our seed is at the right depth. I've done that one and this one, and I have those four to go. So that is what I'm working on right now. Done. Got those welded up. That one's still hot. Got all six of them. Now I gotta move the welder to the back of the machine so I can weld a plate on one of the wheels, the one that we've just put on to reinforce it because it tends to be a weak spot. Right, so this is what we're doing back here. These are the, the brackets for the tires. This is the weak point. If it breaks, it always breaks right down here and just bends this out. So we put this big gusset in here to hopefully strengthen this plate here so it won't bend if these things ever break. So I got this one done, all welded up. We have that one and these two over here to do. We're still working on the bracket for this one, but yeah, our welder, I keep timing it out. It's only a 30% duty cycle welder and I'll weld and almost get one done and then this little light starts flashing and then I have to wait like 15 minutes for it to cool down. So we need a better welder. But other than that, it does a pretty good job. All right, we got these welded on, all these big gussets in all these. Also, they're all gusseted, so hopefully we don't break any of these wheels off this year. One more thing to do before we can pull all these out. And there's some holes in the bottom of this fan housing. We're just gonna stick a piece of metal in there and weld it in. Hopefully that will keep it, keep suction. Okay, fixed it. Put a four inch piece of flat bar in there, welded it on this side. It should stop the air from coming out this side, but pretty well sealed the hole. There's pretty, pretty big holes underneath there, but I think that's everything. We have fixed everything on this one and this one. We, on, we weren't planning on fixing this one. We were just going to sell it, but we decided to run it because they weren't going to give us anything on trade. So that's why we decided to go ahead and fix a whole bunch of stuff. Would have filmed more of fixing this one, but this video is already over 30 minutes long. And I honestly don't know if you guys like the longer videos or not. Let me know. If you like the longer videos, send a comment. Say, hey, I like the longer videos. Keep them coming. Because we have plenty of stuff we can film. We try to only film the stuff that's more interesting, but if you want us to film everything, we'll try and film as much as we can. So let me know. We are going to try and get these out of here tomorrow. It's pretty well near the end of the day, so we're not gonna pull them out today. But tomorrow morning, we're gonna pull these out because we have some seed to some sprouting problems in the cellar. So they want us to try and get rid of as many of the sprouts as we can. So we're gonna bring our sorter table in here and get it working and get everything fixed on that one. And hopefully get some of the sprouts off before they head down to the plant because they're having issues at the plant with all the sprouts. But we'll take these out tomorrow morning. All right, we are finally getting these things out of here. Christopher's back in the tractor and we're gonna hook up to these and get both of these planters out of the shop. So we have other stuff we need to work on. This has to hook up the three point hitch, and then it'll just wheel right out of here. It is such a tight fit. You see we've got about eight inches of clearance on this side, maybe less. Now it looks like we've got about an inch. And on the other side, we've got about eight inches, so not much clearance to get this thing out of the shop.
park that one and come get the other one. Okay, now we gotta get number two. As you can see the, uh, the shop almost isn't tall enough for some of this stuff. Get the second planter hooked up and pull it out. Hopefully we'll be getting our new, our new planter, which is just an updated version of these, these Lockwood Air Cups. They've been good planters, but they have a new one. It's a pull type, it's a little bit different, but they've changed, they've fixed a bunch of the stuff that has always been a problem, so. Get this thing out of here, and hopefully not clip the, the door as he comes out. It is a tight fit. He's getting it out of there pretty easy. Well, we're gonna go park these and we have some other stuff we need to bring in. So I'm gonna end this video here and uh, we'll start filming the next one, which is working on a, a sorter table that we have to try and get the, the sprouts off of our potatoes. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.